Hello. <clears throat> can somebody please confirm you're hearing me? I can hear yes. you. Great. Oh, that's not what I want. There we go. should be able to see my screen now. So today we're going to discuss lab nine, identification of the gram negative organisms. Remember next Thursday, I will not be here. <clears throat> we have a holiday. Uh, you should also be working on your unknown work, your unknown project. Uh, some of you have not gotten started on your unknown project. And if you don't get started really soon, you're going to run out of time to get your unknown project done. So you need to get started. If you have questions about what to do or how to get started, uh, please email me Any or speak to me in Zoom. Uh, any questions? I do have a question. Um, if we requested a test, am I supposed to check the unknown's note area or would you email it directly uh you check your unknown notes area okay great now some tests we have to look up how long the test takes to incubate because after you request it i will get it to you after the incubation period okay somebody had this mistaken belief that you were supposed to get it within 24 hours and that's not correct all right, uh, let's see. I think that's it for here. So I'm gonna shut that down. And today we're talking about lab nine, identification of gram negative bacilli. Let me see, I need to open up my worksheet. We will get to that. So uh, work on lab nine, you're gonna have case studies to this and remember to complete the lab nine worksheet. You can put the answers to the case study in the bottom of the lab nine worksheet. There is some reading for lab nine, uh, just looks like one page on biochemical tests and bacterial identification. And then uh, four pages on methods of classifying and identifying microorganisms. There will be some video clips to view in this uh, uh, lesson. Upon successful completion of this lab, you should be able to know the IMVIC reaction, which is actually an acronym for one, two, three, four different tests. IMVIC stands for Indo, Methyl Red, Vogue's Proscure, and citrate. Uh, these tests are frequently used when classifying enterics, but they're also used in a few other cases too. Uh, we're gonna talk about carbohydrate fermentation. And actually all of you did this because I did PR lactose test. We did that one as one of your first three tests, uh, but that's one of the carbohydrate fermentation tests. And we just put this under the umbrella carbohydrate fermentation. And then you can switch whatever sugar you're using to ferment. Uh, then we'll talk about the motility test. And lastly, the hydrogen sulfide production test. We'll also talk about how you interpret a TSI triple sugar iron slant, a SIMS deep and then growth on McConkie's and hectone enteric or HE auger plates. All of these tests are multi, uh, running more than one test at a time. Like SIMS stands for sulfur, indol, and motility. So that'll be three tests we'll look at when we do a SIMS 
test and McGonkey's really looks at two different things and Actone and Derek Gallagher can actually look at three different things. And then triple sugar iron looks at fermentation, the production of gas, um, growth aerobically and anaerobically. One other thing, all oh, the hydrogen sulfide production. And then be able to use biochemical analysis to solve case studies involving gram-negative bacterial infections. So we'll give you gram-negative bacteria infections, and then you'll need to study or solve the case studies. So we're going to look at the family uh, Enterobacteriaceae. Members of this family are small, gram-negative, non-spore-forming bacilli. They are all facultative anaerobes. They grow well at 35 degrees. There are five, 53 genera, but 24 of these genera in this family are known to cause human infections. All of the members of this family can ferment glucose. They're all oxidase negative. And then these are some of the genera which can cause uh, infections in humans. Most of these genera are normal microbiota of the intestinal tract, aka coliforms, like Escherichia, um, I'm not sure about the others. I, uh, salmonella is in the intestines of birds, like chickens, but it's not normally in the intestines of humans. Uh, they are all opportunistic pathogens in that they can cause urinary tract, and wound infections, pneumonia, and septicemia. There are some genera responsible for causing opportunistic infection like E. coli, Enterobacter, Klebsiella, Citrobacter, and Serratia. Several of the genera are associated with gastroenteritis so that they are frank human pathogens. And these include organi organisms in genera Salmonella, Shigella, and then some variants of E. coli, like E. coli uh, serovar 0157H7, a human pathogen. Any question about the Enterobacteriaceae? <coughs> Excuse me a minute. We're also going to look at the family Pseudomonaceae. The Pseudomonas are similar to the family Enterobacteriaceae in, they are, in that they are all gram-negative bacilli. However, the Pseudomonas are non-glucose fermenting and oxidase-positive bacterium. They can cause opportunistic pathogens, causing infections primarily in immunosuppressed individuals, burn patients, and trauma patients. The number one problem is Pseudomonas aeruginosa, a species which can cause infections in um, patients. And it's in fact a, a, a hospital acquired infection or a nosocomial infection. It can also cause patients in, uh, excuse me, infections in burn patients and in patients who have received trauma. Fortunately, Pseudomonas aeruginosa is not very good at infecting a healthy individual and is mainly simply the skin barrier and the intact mucous membrane that keeps Pseudomonas aeruginosa from causing an infection in a healthy individual. But a burn patient or a trauma patient does not have intact skin or mucous membranes, and they frequently get Pseudomonas aeruginosa infections. It's important for a microbiologist to be able to identify and perform antibiotic susceptibility testing on gram-negative bacilli cultivated for clinical specimens. 
in this lab will look at biochemical tests used to identify gram-negative bacilli, meaning the Pseudomonas and the uh, Enteriobacteriaceae. Uh, here are some tests here. We're not going to be using these. We'll look at each biochemical test separately. Uh, the indole test is that some organisms can produce the enzyme tryptophanase, which converts the amino acid tryptophan into products indole and pyruvic acid. After overnight incubation, COVAX reagent is added which will react with indole to produce a red color at the surface. E. coli tests positive for indole production. Uh, this doesn't look very red, but it's trying to show you, you add COVAX reagent on top, uh, COVAX reagent floats, and uh, it turns reddish, and that's a very purplish red, but that's just the picture, uh, which is, Indole positive, meaning tryptophanase positive. And that's uh, indole negative. The next test we'll look at is the methyl red test. And the methyl red test and the Voges Proscure test are frequently inoculated together and then split into two to get two different tests, the methyl red test, and that's abbreviated the MR test, and the Voges Proscure test, and that's the VP test. So usually they're inoculated, the one tube is inoculated, and then the tube is split into two to run two separate tests, the MR test and the VP test. Uh, both of these tests are used to look at the end products form from glycolysis. MR looks at acid products. The VP test looks at neutral products. So in glycolysis, glucose is used and makes pyruvate. The end products can be acid, and the MR test can detect that. Or the end products can be neutral, and the VP test can detect that. All right, so the MRVP broth is inoculated and incubated for two to five days. After the incubation period, it's split into two to conduct the MR test and the VP test. The MR uh, test is added by adding methyl red to the tube. And if the bacteria produce acid products, then the methyl red, which is a pH indicator, remains red. And that's positive for the MR test. If the tube switches back to yellow, then it's negative for the test. So there we're seeing MR positive and MR negative. The VP test, we take that and we add Barrett's A and Barrett's B solution to it. And then you have to shake it so that oxygen gets in. And then you let it sit for about 60 minutes. And if acetone is a product that's made, it will react in the reaction to change from a golden yellow color shown here, VP negative, to red, and the red is usually at the top. So all three of these tests, the MR, the VP, and the indole, turn red if the test is positive. Any question about any of that? All right, citrate utilization test is the last test of the IMBIC. And it's looking to see if the bacteria can utilize citrate. In this citrate tube called Simmons citrate, the only uh, source of carbon is citrate. 
And if the bacteria can grow on it and turn the tube to a blue color, then it is citrate positive. If the bacteria do not grow on it and the tube remains green, then it is citrate negative. All right, any questions about that? Uh, e. coli and Shigella are similar in that neither have the ability to metabolize citrate. And what's my positive? You don't see one there, but uh, Citrobacter ringi is uh, citrate positive. Yeah, I don't have uh, that stated there, but that's okay. You don't need to know that. Um, carbohydrate metabolism test. You put one sugar in the tube and then you add bacteria to it. And then you look at the fermentation of uh, the, the tube. If fermentation occurs, acid products will be made and the color will change from uh, pinkish or reddish to yellow. Uh, yellow is being acidic. And that will be uh, positive carbohydrate fermentation. And it depends on what sugar it is. If the sugar is lactose, it would be lactose fermentation. But it could be glucose fermentation. You only have one sugar in the tube. The tube also has an inverted Durham tube. The purpose of that Durham tube is to collect a gas bubble. If the fermentation can happen with gas, we'll see a bubble occur in the inverted Durham tube. If the fermentation happens without the production of gas, there will be no bubble in the inverted Durham tube. You score this tube as A for acid, this tube for A, for acid and G, so AG, for acid and gas. Uh, this tube is negative, no fermentation. Any questions about the fermentation of uh, carbohydrate? Uh, fermentation results in uh, acid products from the fermentation of glucose, and that's why the Media changes from pink or red to uh, yellow. The next test we're going to look at looks like the motility test. Some bacteria possess a flagella and are motile, meaning they can swim. Other bacteria lack a flagella and they're non motile. We have a motility auger tube, which is semi solid auger. And that means the auger is at low concentration. And then you take your bacteria on a needle and you stab inoculate uh, in a straight line down the tube. If the bacteria only grow in the stab, then the bacteria is non-motile. If on the other hand, the bacteria grow outside of the stab, then it is motile. If it's very motile, it'll look like this. And here you can see just barely a bit of the stab right there. And it's cloudy everywhere because the bacteria have swam everywhere. And the cloudiness means there's bacteria growing there. Okay. Uh, it may not be that motile. And if it's non-motile, you'll see feathering of the bacteria coming out of the stab. And I'll try and draw what I mean by feathering. Let's see if I can get it from here. Oh, that's the wrong one. Go back here. Well, let's just copy it and I'll put it into a uh, picture. 
Um, going to do this just for a minute. I'm not allowing you to see this because I got to call up a picture and I don't have it on the background. Oh, that's not the right one. Let's go edit that. Oh, that's the wrong picture. <laughs> Let's try that again, copying. Oh, it is the right one. It's just that that's not a very visible one. Let me see if I can get that again. I see what happened was the picture went on top of another picture and I copied the picture behind it. All right, where's my paint? There it is. Pull that up. There we go. Share my screen. All right. So feathering would be where the bacteria, let's see, is that going to be dark enough? grow outside of the stab mark. And usually it's irregular, the growth. Any question about that? And then the feathering will go up there too. All right, let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Shut down. Come back to my page. Uh oh, did I shut that down? Looks like I shut that down. Shut the wrong thing down. That's eight. I want nine. Sorry about that. All right, that's the uh, motility test. Any questions about the motility test? If not, let's move on. The hydrogen sulfide produ production test. Some bacteria can produce hydrogen sulfide gas from a sulfur containing compound. We can run this hydrogen sulfide test in several different tests. You can look at it in the triple sugar iron slant, the sulfur indole motility or the SEM auger tube. You can also look at sulfur production in the HE or hectone enteric plates. If bacteria produce hydrogen and sulfide, the media in all three of these tubes will turn black from a black precipitate. Citrobacter salmonella and proteus produce hydrogen and sulfide gas, and they'll turn the tube black. Right here we see uh, hydrogen sulfide production being positive, and this looks like a uh, Sims too. Hydrogen sulfide is produced usually under reduced oxygen or anaerobic conditions. And that's why the bottom of the tube is black. The very top is not black. You can run a, a hydrogen sulfide test in the triple sugar iron. So let me talk about that test next. The triple sugar iron is a tube with a slant, and it has three sugars in it, uh, glucose, lactose, and sucrose. But the sugars are not in equal proportion. 
the glucose is only 0.1%, the lactose are 10 times more common, uh, the lactose and sucrose 10 times more common, and they're at 1%. This tube is uh, uh, reddish when you start from the phenol uh, red indicator, and you use that indicator to determine if uh, acid is produced from the fermentation of sugars. The tube also has sodium thiosulfate in it and ferrous sulfate, and they will turn black if hydrogen sulfide gas is produced. What you do is you take an inoculating needle and you put uh, bacteria on the tip of the needle, and then you stab, inoculate the tube. And you should actually go down, they've only gone down in this picture about half of the way. You should go down about two thirds of the way. And you start from the bottom of the slant here. So you should go down to about there. The reason is you wanna look at uh, anaerobic growth in the stab inoculation. You then take the needle out and put bacteria once again on the tip of the tube and then you inoculate the slant. This is for getting the bacteria to grow aerobically. And then you compare the aerobic growth of the bacteria to the anaerobic growth. All right, the interpretation of triple sugar iron is complex. If the sugar is fermented, the tube will turn yellowish from a reddish or pinkish color. Okay, and that's from the acid being produced by the fermentation of the sugar. If the tube is yellow in the butt, but red on the slant, then only glucose is fermented. In this tube, we know that glucose is fermented because that's the base sugar, but at least one other sugar, either the uh, either the lactose or the sucrose are fermented, or both. We don't know which one or both, but we do know that one or both of them are fermented because the slant is yellow and the butt is yellow. And this one where the slant is yellow, but the butt is red, it's because glucose was the only sugar fermented and the fermentation of glucose happens slower anaerobically than aerobically. And so we still have the yellow color and the fermentation of the sugar occurring in the butt. But on the slant, all of the sugar was used up and if we had looked earlier at this tube, it would have been yellow on the slant. But at the time of the tube we look at, meaning about 18 to 24 hours later, or is it 48 hours? I don't remember, I have to look that up. When we look at it, the tube has turned from yellow to pink. The reason that happens is all of the glucose has been used up. Remember the glucose is tenfold lower, or 0.1% glucose. And all of the glucose is used up. The bacteria start utilizing the protein in the media. And when it utilizes protein, it will produce um, ammonia from the amine in the protein. Ammonia is basic. And that will change the color from yellow to pink. And that's why we can tell that only glucose is fermented in this tube. Any questions about that? All right. If there's a cracking of the auger or lifting of the auger, then gas is produced in the fermentation of the sugar. If there is no cracking of the auger or lifting of the auger, no gas is produced in fermentation. And if there's blackening, particularly in the butt, then hydrogen sulfide is produced. If it is black, you know that fermentation has happened because fermentation happens 
uh, when hydrogen sulfide is produced. And so you can't see yellow here, but if it wasn't black, it would be yellow. And then only glucose is fermented because we can see that the slant is pinkish. Any questions about interpretation of the TSI slant? All right, a lot is going on with uh, TSI. Uh, the sulfur sulfide endomotility motility test, frequently called the SIMS test, is a deep, which is stab inoculated with your bacteria. Let me see if I can blow this up just a little. Here we can see a stab, and that's where we inoculated the bacteria on a needle. If the bacteria only grow, in the stab, then you know that the bacteria are non-modal. If the bacteria grow out of the stab, like this tube, then uh, the bacteria are modal, meaning they have a flagella. So that's the M part of the SIMS. The endol is we're looking at the endol production. You add COVAX reagent to the top of the tube, and if it's negative, it'll be yellowish in color, or off-white, whatever color that is. And if it's uh, indole positive, the COVAX will turn pinkish or reddish. So all of these three are indole positive. You have to add COVAX reagent to the tube. And then the third test is we're looking at the production of hydrogen sulfide gas. If the tube turns black, particularly on the bottom, hydrogen sulfide is being produced. If the tube is not black, there's no hydrogen sulfide being produced. Any questions about the SEMS tube? All right, let's talk about McConkie's auger. McConkie's we've talked about before. It is a plate that grows or selects for gram negatives. So most of the time, if you have growth on McConkie's, it's from a gram negative species. If it's gram positive, it tends not to grow on McConkie's. If the color is uh, purple, or pinkish, then the uh, sugar lactose is being fermented. If the color is not pinkish or purplish, usually off-white, but it really depends on what color the bacteria is. The bacteria will be their normal color. And then it's non-lactose fermenting. Uh, that's McConkie's. We can also grow the bacteria on HE or hectone enteric auger. And uh, this is a selective media. It selects four gram negatives. So if you see growth on the HE plate, it's the most likely a gram negative bacteria. No growth means it's most likely a gram positive bacteria. We can look at uh, the uh, lactose fermentation, if there's no lactose fermentation, the bacteria on hectone enteric auger will be its normal color, in this case, white or off-white. If the bacteria ferment lactose, it'll be salmon colored orangish, reddish salmon color. And then on HE, we can also look at hydrogen sulfide being produced. If the bacteria produce hydrogen sulfide, the colonies will be black in color. No hydrogen sulfide and no lactose fermentation. They will be their normal color. Any question about any of that?
salmonella does produce uh, hydrogen sulfide, so it'll be black colored. If not, let's talk about the laboratory exercises. You're not physically going to be doing any of the biochemical tests. However, you are responsible for knowing how to perform the tests and how to interpret them. We have uh, video clips on the carbohydrate fermentation test, the SEMS tube, the MR and the VP test, and that is two tests, but they're inoculated together. And then the uh, uh, video on the triple sugar iron test. Let's go ahead and switch to the worksheet. Not quite. We then have a link. No, excuse me. That's a video on the McConkie auger test, inoculating the McConkie's auger plate and then reading the McConkie's auger. And then a, a, a link to the website Microbuzz. Let me go ahead and open that. You need to click on the differential test to Microbuzz. There it comes. And that'll be on the left right there. And then look at some of these tests. You only need to click on the test that you need to to complete table for step one of the worksheet to lab nine. And then complete the case studies below. And I've got the case studies all on this page, but let's come back to this and look at the table. So some of these, like carbohydrate fermentation, was talked about in this lab, but on others of them, they weren't talked about in this lab. And then click on the link for microbus and then the differential tests. Well, there's methyl red Vogue's per skier citrate test. I think citrate test would be a good one because uh, we don't have a link to that one, uh, video to it. And read about the test and, and how to interpret it from the microbus. And then use it to fill the table right here, like. Uh, Oxidase has been filled in for you the very first. You need to fill in this table for a positive result. For oxidase positive, the cell or spots will turn blue. And for negative, you need to put that in there. And they're just not blue. Okay. And then do that for a positive result for indole and for a negative result. And then for all of these uh, uh, tests in the table, fill it in. Like for MAC, uh, lactose fermentation, uh, it would be uh, pinkish color or purplish. And for HE, it'd be salmon. Okay. Any questions about this table? All right, let's go back to the worksheet. Or excuse me, the lab module. So read the case studies. Um, case one is a prison inmate who's brought into the ER wound with an open wound. And this patient is known for self-inflicting, infecting, inflicting, infecting himself. A routine culture and sensitivity test is ordered. The appropriate transport media is used for specimen collection and for inoculation of the prescribed media. Below are the results of routine culture for overnight incubation in a CO2 incubator at 35 degrees. So here we're growing the bacteria on blood auger. An organism uh, grown on McConkie's auger. And you can notice the color of this bacteria on McConkie's. And then we do a gram stain, blow that up a little bit so you can see that better. Um,
All right, now I can see the shape right there and the color you can easily make out whether that's gram positive or gram negative. And then we did the following rapid test on day two. We, uh, whoop, where is that? On the next page, I bet. Uh, SEMS tube is shown here. There, there, I got it. And it's COVAX region on top. Uh, MR test is shown here. The VP test is shown here. The citrate test is shown here. And then TSI is shown here. So interpret these results and then figure out what organism is infecting them and put that in case study one in the worksheet down here. Uh, this is a key you can use for this uh, um, case studies. And this is for recording your results from the different tests. And then case study one, you need to state what bacteria is causing the infection. And it'll be one of these bacteria up here. For the Pseudomonas, you just need to say the genera. But for the Enterobacteriaceae, you have to say the species, except for Enterobacteria, that's a genera. I guess Shigella is a genera too. All right, any question about how to do these? If not, go ahead and read through the rest of the case studies. Where do I have that? Case study two, Mikey talked his mom into buying a pet turtle and he, Mikey was good at changing the water and feeding his turtle, but he's not diligent about washing his hands afterwards. And Mikey develops diarrhea, nausea, and fever. And then the pediatrician does some tests. You can look at it here. And then these tests here, and then identify the species. And then read case study three, case study four, and case study five. And then put your answer on the worksheet and then complete the worksheet. There is one other part of the worksheet, which I'll talk about now. And that is you have to read the question and then fill in the blank. Like what reagent must be added to detect the presence of indole that was mentioned in today's lab. Methyl red is a pH indicator that remains what color under acidic conditions. So just fill in the blanks. Occasionally, the question will have two questions to the question, like E, what is the pH indicator used to detect carbohydrate fermentation? And is yellow under, you have to bold acidic or basic. So you got to say what the pH indicator is in E, and then bold, or you can write if you can't bold, uh, write it right over here, uh, acidic or basic. So fill in the questions and then uh, turn in the worksheet when you're done. The worksheet is due 11.59 uh, p.m. this Saturday, and I will be here until eight o'clock to answer any questions with the lab or any other questions. All right, any questions? If not, I'm done, so stop the share, stop